Hello, everybody, and welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around fantasy Premier League. My name is Serge. And um, my name is James. And we go into the final episode of Content Creator Week, James, with one that I've definitely been looking forward to for, for a while. And I'll tell you why, James. Go. We, start, we started four years ago, so going into season five, um, and when we started the podcast, I don't think either of us were plugged into the community at all. It literally was, we're doing a podcast, no, no, no idea about Twitter, no idea about Scout, no idea about anything. I literally remember it was probably three or four months in that we thought, oh, wow, there's, uh, there's a lot of people on Twitter here. I don't know if you remember back then, James. I can barely remember last week, my England play. <laughs> and, then, and, and that was when, when we first kind of sort of discovered Scout and uh, some of the other platforms that were out there as well. And you start coming across some other people like as was active at the time. And, and Mark, who uh, Mr. Southern's here, was talked about, but wasn't active in the community. I don't know if you remember back then, Mark, this was literally four seasons ago. I ain't even fucking introduced them yet. Yeah, I know. But there was this myth. <laughs> And, oh, don't um, introduce him as a myth. It winds him up no end. And yeah. honestly, but but you were you were not active in the community or anywhere to be seen, but people talked about the, the, the OG, like Late Riser talked to us as being OGs, we were not OGs. Yeah, and I had to look up what year, an OG was, by the way, Serge. I yeah, didn't yeah. have a clue what that was. <laughs> Old granddad. <laughs> Old granddad, yeah. Well, and then, obviously... Last season with the rise of Black Box and what have you, getting back involved in the community and uh, listening to the content, it was like, right, okay, it's all kind of coming together and I understand what what who, who Mr. Southerns was. And obviously, as I've been watching uh, with Scoutcast for quite a bit before that as well. So it's, it's yeah, it's a, it's a coming together of quite a bit of uh, a few years of watching from the sidelines to have these boys on the show, James. Do you want to introduce them now that I've told him? You know, you know, anyway. I hope your, your other halves are like birthday cards as nice as that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Let me introduce you. I don't know which order to introduce them in, but the uh, the thumbnail that Mark sent me had as first. So we'll introduce first Jazz Phillips and Mark Southerns as a Mark from FPL Black Box. How are you both, lads? Pretty good. Pretty excited to start again. Euros are done. I'm ready to dive back into the wonderful world of FPL and get my heart broken like I do every year. And yourself, Mark? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm giving up nicely now. I, uh, I've listened to a few of the pods you've done this week, and I know you've been talking about fatigue and it coming too early. And I, and I share that. Certainly, I thought oh, it's far too early. I don't want to think about it. I actually tweeted, didn't I? I said I'm going to give my me and my family another three, four weeks first before I get into this again. But now it's setting in. Now, when I started prepping for the first black box show and and getting into the data again and and just looking at Looking at the team for the first time, tinkering a little bit, it started. The magic started to come in now, and in another week I'll be fully. He sent me so it. many tables, so many. <laughs> tables. <laughs> you can just you can see the cogs whirring again with Mark. It's it's great. <laughs> Before we get into um, how black bots come about, I, I want to ask guys this myth thing. Th- th- does that actually bother you? What Mark being a myth? Yeah. Well, no, because the more I've got to know him, the more I realise that he's a terrible person. And, <laughs> <laughs> and actually, no, you know... What's on WhatsApp stays on WhatsApp. Yeah, man. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But it's, it's funny, you know, the illusion that everyone's created around Mark. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. No, Mark, Mark, you know, Mark's great. He doesn't bother me at all. He's, earned, he's a great FPL manager, built scout. He's a great guy. So I've got nothing bad to say about my co-host. Until you start recording your own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> How did it come about then? Whose idea was it? Well, it was, it was your idea, Baz, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it was my... I, I, I'd started a, a podcast on my own a, a year before or, or a little while ago um, called FPL Black Box, looking at... I was basically having a really bad season. I was trying to see if I could learn anything from it. Uh, and then I stopped doing it for a bit, did the Top Guns thing with Luke, and then that kind of stopped. I was thinking of bringing Black Box back. It just happened it was a time when Mark was looking to get back into podcasting. So I put, like a random video out on YouTube. I mean, graphics were terrible, audio quality awful. I don't know why Mark agreed to, you know, got in touch. But yeah, Mark sent me a nice a nice long email about three o'clock in the morning one night and uh, asked if I wanted to team up. So here we are. Yeah, I, I remember it well. Basically, I had a, I had a dark 18 months. Um, didn't have a very good season and I had some health problems. I had this, um, no one knew what I had. In the end, I got diagnosed and got better and I'm managing it and so on. And, and that, that made me think, well, I can, now I've got this under control and I'm well again. I can get back into doing content. Obviously, I'd, I'd got away from Scout 
um, and didn't want to take on too much. But I've, I've managed to convince my partner that, oh, God, let me do one, po- just one Waffer Finn podcast a week. <laughs> uh, and she said, oh, go on then. And then I looked about, should I do it on my own? On my own? Should I set out on my top? But I, I ideally wanted to have someone to bounce off. And yeah, I saw as his video with his graphics and his stuff, and then I thought, Ooh, lots of room for improvement here. No, I didn't. <laughs> Top, tier. I, uh, Top tier. It's like it's like getting the Sunderland job. It can only be up for me. Can't it? <laughs> but um, no, I saw it and thought, well, you know, I thought about who I would want to work with, and I think this is really important. And I think it's something that you guys have in spades. It's that that kind of ability to bounce off each other, way you complement each other, the way the personalities blend it fits like really comfortable for the listener, right? They can listen to, and it doesn't matter what you're talking about. It's comfortable and it's a, a pleasure to listen, right? And I think when I was like looking at who I wanted to be working with on a pod, I needed someone who would bring that out in me and who would compliment me and someone who, you know, you could you could joke with and have a go at their team and their decisions without feeling like you were kind of, there was an edge to it, you know, they yeah. can take it and they can come back. And they're not going to take it personally. And you'll laugh about it after and, it's not easy, right, to get that individual and that blend between two guys on a podcast. And as was like first choice anyway. And then when I saw he did this video, I was like, "Well, he's he's it's more or less a calling card. It's, it's there for me." It's well, and, Andy was unavailable, wasn't he? But... I was going to say this is where we find <laughs> out. As... Andy had a dodgy internet connection at the time, and I was like, "Oh, you know, yeah. the technicalities of that would be no." <laughs> so yeah, Andy was my first. No, joking. Um, so yeah, it was three in the morning. I was sitting. I remember I was sitting in bed going, "Should I send this email to As? Would he? Would he think it's like?" A bit cheeky. How will he receive it? Because I hadn't spoken to him for like two years, really. Mm. Maybe because we knew that. each other from I'd, I'd met Mark a few years before because I, I worked for Scout. Well, worked for them. I was like an admin on the boards, and I went to a, a Scout camp, and Mark very generously put his car behind the bar, and I got absolutely pissed out of my face. I regret it. that. Yeah, there's a meet up on uh, on Saturday, Mark. Just say uh, no, my card ain't going to bring that bar. card out. <laughs> <laughs> you take expensive prices, bro. Oh, mate. <laughs> But yeah, we hadn't had too much interaction, had we, Mark? Before, like, we knew each other, ish, but not not amazing. I think the first the first pod we did, we finished it, and we were both like, yeah, that was re- that felt really good. Like that was we thought it was it was quite nice, and it was good job it did because we'd already invested in all the <laughs> equipment and graphics and all that stuff. But yeah, I yeah. think I think I listened to you with Luke on Top Guns and thought, mm. and not I, I really did generally think it was one of the best pods out there. You only did it ad hoc. And it was like, it came in, you know, it weren't consistent with it, but what you had with Luke is what I wanted to get with somebody. And I was like, you know, this is what they've got. is really good. And obviously Luke couldn't commit to doing it as regularly, which is why you were doing Black Box again. So I was like, yeah, I mean, I knew Luke really well, as well as yourself as. So I thought, yeah, I think it could work. So, yeah, I, I mean, I sent the email at 2.33 on a Sunday night. And uh, the rest is history, really. He, he, he said yes, and we, we started getting going, basically. Mm. How much um, time did you spend prior to the pod kind of planning out what you would talk about, what different sections you wanted? Because it felt to me last year that the evolution was very quick, very fast, and it got a lot better, a lot more. I I think you found your rhythm and really kept working on the content. Sometimes people will will stick with their routine, but it felt like you guys were really working on, right, how can we improve this? How can we improve this? And it really evolved quite quickly at the start of last season. And then obviously you talk about bringing in more graphics and, and what have you and stuff. So did you kind of, in the early days, just hit record and see what came out or did you do a lot of planning then as well? <laughs> there's no there's no hit the button and just record with Mark, really. It's, right. uh, it's meticulous, meticulous detail a lot of the time. Uh, I mean, he talks about Top Guns. Top Guns was the complete opposite. That was just <laughs> Luke and I just whack the thing on and just talk absolute rubbish for, for an hour. But Mark is, the prep Mark does every show, right? even right from the start, you know, right down to trying to find which sounds you know which which programs will get the best sound which you know that, that's why we have so many technical problems it's normally down to mark experimenting with new hardware or software or mm. you know new new things but yeah it's, it's, i can it's, tell it's from mark's of... twitter i can see when people post pictures he will comment on the microphone or stuff like that yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, here's, no. a, here's a geek getting geeked out by uh, all the techie yeah, stuff I, i'm well into all that as well i was like if I, yeah, if, yeah. I, if i do something i get into the technicalities the mm. nitty-gritty of it right which is obviously probably why i've ended up here because i've taken it so seriously but i think you know i the, the content i i used to obviously i worked on the tv show right the official show and i i used to work with the producer and do a lot of prep for that show right a lot of the content that was done in the show was me and sean working together putting it together right so he would come to me start the week and go right, what are we going to look at this week in the show and i'd help him 
and I'd provide him some stats and some angles. And so basically when I started Black Box, I thought, I'm just going to carry that on because I love doing that for the show. And on the show, you you couldn't be as edgy and a little, you know, you can't you 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 can't go into things as deep. You've got to be entertaining first and foremost on the on the official show. Whereas on a podcast, you know you're talking to the hardcore, really. You don't have to worry about, you know, oh, we've just done 20 minutes on the on the on the kind of uh, the back line of Brighton and Ove Albion, and we've talked about nothing else but Ben White's inability to get forward. That doesn't matter on a podcast. It does on a on an half an hour show on TV. You can't do that, right? Mm. So I just extrapolated what I did for the show and took it a bit further. And then bit by bit, it, it, it found a rhythm, like you say. It's funny, actually. Like, we've had shows where, like, the first half hour, we're kind of getting going, and then it just clicks, and you just think, oh, that last hour is really good. And it could be something that just triggers you off and... That's yeah. a lot about the relationship. I think we have, we like you, Mark does all the planning. Like we know what we're going to be talking about, but we don't script anything or we don't like mm. a lot of the time. I don't even bother reading the, you know, up well, some, some, most of the time you don't send me notes. Sometimes you send me notes. I don't read them. I think that kind of helps in a way though, because some of the stuff Mark presents to me, I'm almost like, whoa, that's really interesting. I hadn't even thought about that. Whereas if I'd kind of spent loads of time looking at it myself, it might just get a bit dry because we both used to be talking about the same stats and, and things. I quite like the fact that we've got a plan so there's interesting stuff to present but at the same time we can still chat a bit more it's kind of it hits both both worlds really yeah we that, that, we've we that's us as well isn't it such mm. like we yeah, we very I much mean, so. we literally i mean say the main podcast we normally do on a monday or so we know we're going to talk about all the games but i think the the beauty for me and Suj is we don't have much contact over the weekend or anything. Our first contact is you ready to press yeah. record, basically. And so then there's a there's a fluidity. It means we go on tangents and lose our thread quite a lot. There's a stuff. lot of and similarities between our. We obviously too. don't bring the the kind of statistical expertise that you guys bring into it, but I think yeah that that chemistry that we have there's similarities between our two shows. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean I watched a lot of your stuff while I was ill. I was like I got back into the scene. I was, I was silent. I wasn't on Twitter, but I soaked up a lot of content in that time. And that's what inspired me to get back into doing stuff because I thought there's so much now out there. And I, I, I want to be part of this. I want to be doing things that like you were doing. Like I know you talk about the 24-hour streamers. I wouldn't do that doing again. It again. <laughs> no, 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 but, no, I'm not doing that again, mate. You <laughs> killed me. But, uh, honest to God, when I watched that and I saw that two guys had gone out and done that in the FPL community, I was like, I should have been part of that. I wanted to be part of that. And why wasn't I part of that? I've got to get back and be part of something like that again. So you actually helped get me off my ass again. Because oh, that doesn't mean I'm doing, doing it. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever do, do it, well, I'll, do, I'll yeah. do at least half an hour for you. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you can do the whole 24 hours for me if you like, mate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that is quite fascinating. I, I, I would, strangely, I would do it again, James. I don't know why See? you're against it, but I would do it again. But... Do you know what? At the time, it, it coincided nicely with um, obviously everything that was going on with the NHS and what have you. And then to see, I think throughout the day, we were averaging at least 250 people were on at any given time throughout the entire 24 hours. That, that's the other thing that made me think, wow, the community is so good and so strong and so positive as well. Um, and, and it's nice to hear that it kind of makes people want to get involved with it more. Not only that, like you started really pushing Black Box last year. One thing with the whole content creator week this week is to showcase to people that want to get into creating content. Just because there is a lot out there doesn't mean there's, there isn't room for more. You I just have to find that. your own voice and rhythm. And people have started out later than us, have grown bigger than us with bigger audiences. But it's not just about size necessarily. There's room for everybody. Yeah, I, I think I think, and and I get messages quite quite often from people who are looking to start a podcast with their friends. They're not expecting to get thousands of followers from it, but they just think it'd be quite fun and and you know have some ideas. And and you never really know where where the stuff's going to bounce from. My biggest bit of advice, though, for anyone looking to start a, a podcast or anything, I really do agree with Mark that the the equipment has to be at least to a kind of a baseline level because if you if you want people to listen and, and they're coming in the mics are all crackly and your webcam can't really see things and you're all dark and all that kind of stuff it's just one of those things that instantly puts you off if you you know you don't have to spend a huge amount you know to yeah. get a, a fairly decent microphone a fairly decent camera and then that, that just gives you a, a a good start so if anyone's listening who is thinking that's, that's always the first thing i kind of recommend to yeah i mean i listen to the always cheating guys right and so there's their quality of what they deliver not only the content but the sound quality because they're they're in a that they're in a podcast studio some of the time and maybe not in lockdown, but they have been in the past. So 
that's the bar I wanted to reach, right? It's yeah. a really high bar because we're all working remotely. I'm working in my shed right now, as is in his little room. So how do we get that? Well, we can't, but we can get as close as we can try. And, and I think that is key, right? It's not all about what you say. It's about, you know, being a, a, a pleasant listen for the listener, not okay, only now, about... Imagine if the audience yeah. shit on this. <laughs> no, you're quite, it's spot on. You've got man child producing you and everything. Right? Man child don't do oh, nothing really no more. That's a number myth. Now. Yeah, yeah. We need to end, stop ending the podcast with. I'm going to call him out, but he'll be there on a Saturday, James. We'll call him out then. It's funny, as you're saying, the, the advice you'd give around that. I, I couldn't agree more, but I think I've always, when people have said to me, I'm thinking of starting a podcast, I, I, my, always, my first response is, are you, will you do 50 episodes? Mm. If, you, if you promise me you'll do 50 episodes, then start with episode one, because so many people get to 10 or 15 episodes and, and then on. think, oh yeah, I haven't got any listeners or I'm not really going to do this and, and call it a day. But episode one for us is still probably got just 300 listeners or something like that. You have to have the stamina. That's wishful thinking. You have to have the stamina. <laughs> Yeah. If you don't have the stamina to keep going as well, then you'll never get better. And um, there is a there's kind of a tipping point with everything where suddenly everything clicks and the listenership goes up and the quality of the content seems to go up and what have you. So I always tell people, are you, are you going to do 50 episodes? Because if you're not going to commit to doing 50 episodes, don't bother doing the first episode. Yeah. And it's got to be fairly regular, right? You've got to, you've got to, mm. you can't just do one a month or one every two months or something. It's got to be something no. that you, you know, you set a time, we're going to do this every week, this time. We're going to be there no matter what and, and continue it on. So, yeah, completely agree. One I always but, say to people as well is you've got to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah so that's it. If, yeah, it grows, yeah. if it grows big enough, and I, I think because obviously there's a lot of FPL content creators who are obviously monetizing now and stuff, people can see that and think, oh, wouldn't it be great if we can do a podcast and monetize it? And if you get there, brilliant. But if that's your goal from day one, you're going to struggle with that's because it's a long way away. Mm. So you have to enjoy what you're doing in the first instance. Yeah, I mean, I saw that with Scout. Obviously, the website went from nothing to what it became. And with the Scout cast as well, when Granville and I started it, we built from nothing. And there wasn't ever an intention for it to become what it did and what it is now. But And it took ages, right? And and I always say, you know, I remember when I built the website, it, I remember getting in, I was in a car share, and I used to get in the car, oh, 100 people came to the site last week and all that. And I remember <laughs> those days. And, and I remember it was, it's the passion for what you do and the fun and pleasure you get from it that drives you to keep going it ain't the traffic i ain't the listeners because they I, ain't going to come that. for ages i see that i don't i don't i don't i haven't i can't think of any examples of people that i think oh you're only doing a podcast just to make a bit of cash from it i everyone everyone that, I, that speaks to me or, or does the podcast or stuff does it or has started doing it because they just love fpl and want to talk about mm. it and often it just starts with their friends right that's that's what i like yeah. about it even podcasts which only get like 300 listens or something a lot of the time i listen to them and i just hear two mates just chatting and i end up just listening to the whole thing and like you know it's 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 great that's what that's what fbl is is such a a crazy game because i just don't know how many other hobbies or whatever you want to call it there are that can just get people together like fbl does it's my parents can't understand it they try they listen to black books every week but they're still like Oh, your dad's a star. Dad. He's, he's always there <laughs> listening. Fantastic. No, as you thought, like, a... super chat from my dad along the last episode. Oh, that brilliant. Nice. That was a highlight. We, that. We've all been to like a, we've all been to money, a party. Dad was... gives you pocket money through yeah. super chat. <laughs> that was a really good episode, as well. He loves you, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> well, we, I've been to parties where, or dinner parties with my partner where there's been somebody there who plays fantasy football. And then that's it. You know, the conversation between me and me and them just took on and it's like oh we've lost those two because they're just going to talk about fbl and that's what happens you can have a conversation with a stranger for hours about fbl because you've got stories to swap and that's that's how podcasts can 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 wire into that you know it's like you want to share stories you want to hear stories and that's why podcasts are so effective i think it comes as a product off of the sport at the end of the day right ours we obviously go into different directions not just fpl with some of the stuff we do fpl is a smaller product of of football right and if you've got two people in a room who talk about football that's, that's the easiest way to start talking to people is what we say about when there's fpl meetups and stuff people say i'm coming alone i'm i'm a bit worried about coming on my own you're coming with everybody else who talks the same language it's football it's not like going yeah. on a dating night everybody else has got the same interest as you it's, it's easy yeah what did you two learn last year then? Isn't that the, the premise a little bit of, of Black Box was to kind of find what some of the common mistakes are that you make and kind of put them in a bin, basically, and make sure you don't make them again for at least three weeks or so. What are the, what are the biggest learnings from last year, guys? 
Yeah, we we did it. We did a show on it, didn't we, Mark? I mean, oh, God, it's been so long now. This is the problem. You you write down all your mistakes, learn from them, then forget them just before the, the pre-season <laughs> starts. <laughs> I mean, definitely the you know I think well I'm probably speaking for Mark, but the unproven players thing was was a big thing for me again, and we say it every year and you know taking a risk on players like Werner and Havertz and stuff kind of you know and and especially with game week I mean game week one what I learned was just that game week one just remains just like an elusive beast for me to actually get any points on I just seem to mess it up every year and I'm constantly on the back foot and getting that good start is is just so important so like I look back at my game week one team last year and I had like Vinagra and Havertz and Ben Davies got in there somewhere and you know I, I just I'd made quite a lot of risky risky picks so I'm trying to learn off the back of that and not not repeat that and then throughout the season I think I've definitely got this kind of innate stubbornness with with certain things trying to be a bit different you know maybe for the sake of it and sometimes it works like with Trossard other times like with Mares, it just goes you know falls completely flat so there's plenty there's plenty of things to work on and yeah i imagine mark's got the the list of learnings to to bring out on the first black box which... I've, I've got one for you straight away if you had ben davis game week one last year you weren't listening to us so that's, yeah. that's, <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's mark's well. one listen to planet fpl <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i think i think um for me it was like i've played the game for years 15 16 years right but i've never when i've made a mistake i've just shaking it off and carried on right because i thought that was the right thing to do you know you don't want to dwell on it you don't want to make this bring yourself down you want to move on there's a game week in a few days get on with it don't think about it but with black box it was all about changing that and going oh hold on a minute hold on a minute i've i've cocked up here somewhere how did i do that why did i do that how did i arrive at that mistake am i to blame is it was it just bad luck or did i do something wrong was the thought process wrong what did i miss as well like if i if I've captained someone who got four points and some other captain got 28 or whatever, I'll look at what did they see, the people who owned that player that I didn't see prior to this? And what did I miss? And, it, that, and that's what it's about. And I think when I started unlocking that, it was a new, added a new dimension to the way I play the game. And it becomes really fascinating because you learn about yourself, but you also learn about how others play the game as well. Because I, I, I know that um, there's managers out there, like General, for example, doesn't look at other people's teams. Like he was dropping out of leagues on purpose because he, he. I remember him saying he doesn't want to know what other managers are doing. Doesn't want to look at their teams. I'm the opposite. I like to see what they're doing and what processes they're using, and if they're having more success than, than me, what are they seeing that I'm missing, and that kind of thing. Right? I'm really into that, and 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 I'm just pointing that microscope at myself as well. And I think. It, last season was a bit of an experiment for me because not only was I doing black box and playing this way, I was also on Twitter for the first time, like proper on Twitter, like posting and reading on Twitter, which I've never done before. And I kind of anticipated that would have a negative impact on my season, but actually it was all right. I did okay. So it was an experiment okay. doing this podcast and doing <laughs> so Twitter. Well. And I wanted, to, I wanted to see if adding those variables in would change anything in the way I played, but it didn't too much. But... I was really aware of the mistakes I made, right? I know what mistakes I made and now I can look to correct them, not only as the season went on, but going into this season. Can I throw a name into the conversation just quickly while going back to kind of Az's point about Havertz and Werner and players like that? I take it on that basis, neither of you will be starting with Jaden Sancho, irrespective of price then. I think we're both thinking of starting with him, aren't we, Mark? <laughs> yeah, if, if, if FBL do the right thing and price him as they should then um, I think that I would rather go Sancho than Bruno to begin with, I think, um, initially. What's the, right, what's the right thing? Nine million? Ten, nine ten, and a half million? Ten million at most, nine five, hopefully, right? He, like, I was, I was chatting to us about this last night. He's not, like, Sonny's just had a 200-point season, right? So he can't, he, and Sonny's 10 million. You can't make him more than that. You can't say, oh, Sancho's coming in at 10.5, so we back him to have a 200-point season on his debut season. So I hope they stick him at 10 or below. And then then we've got a choice, right? Like the prices, I was a bit disappointed with some of them, right? But on the face of it, majority are all good, okay. Um, I know you think they're a bit cheap, James. I, heard that. I always do, <laughs> irrespective. But um, I think what they're missing is that little subtlety, that little nuance where you have to make a decision. Like the Rafina Bamford thing, for example. Bamford at eight and Rafina at six five. It's no, it's no, there's no fault needed there, is there? I mean, Salamano. I know, I know Suj, you like Bamford, but 
you know, if you if they'd have made if they made Rafina seven five Bamford eight, then you've got a choice, and Bamford comes more into the equation for people. But as it is, most will probably go Rafina, and that's what I mean. Like with Sancho and Bruno, they need to put him at a price which makes people who have got Bruno now think twice about it, and that is what makes the game. That's what brings out the best in the game and breaks up the template a bit. So I hope they hope he comes in at nine five or ten, no more than that. The question is a good one, though. Of we've just been well, I've just been saying that I don't want to go with unproven players, and then I'm saying, yeah, I'm definitely going to go for Sancho over <laughs> over Bruno. I mean, it's a good point. I mean, it's just it's it's it's, it's like if 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 Sancho comes in at ten five or eleven, if they go absolutely nuts, then there is no decision there. But if you're if you're looking at saving two million or even two point five, then I think yeah, you've got to consider. I mean, Bruno isn't in hasn't been in the best form. Poor tournament again. Wasn't great towards the end of last season. I wonder if he's going to come in and absolutely smash it straight away as well. I don't know. It's a tricky one. All right, so, we, so we learned the first mistake in Black Box, you might re-repeat it straight away. Yep. Cool. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, I mean, we, I, I went for Werner and Naz went for Werner. And I, I, yeah, I everyone did it out, went for Werner. I went for Werner. I, I did it out of fear, though. Yeah, I, I, I uh, did the same as Az as well. I went with Havertz as well. Um, and for me, it's always, oh. I, I do chase a little bit of, um, Don't speak to us about Abbott's, mate. What do you, what do you no, think no. about that? <laughs> what do you think of Glory Havertz? of being right. Great right player. Um, <laughs> the, the, there's nothing more satisfying than going a little bit left field in FPO and then that player coming in with a big return and what have you. It's trying to find but, the balance, isn't it? But between, chasing it, yeah. yeah I, always, I always try and be too clever. And, and that's one thing I know this season. Uh, if you talk about my black box, I'm going to be more boring and, and, and not try and overthink it but we talked about it when we were talking with um was it and andy or general we were talking about like we all we all think we're a football manager we all think we know best we all think we can outthink the other person which is what drives us to try and make decisions that are a little bit different and there's a massive adrenaline rush when you get it right um but unfortunately it it's not more often than it is when you get i think it wrong. i think as well though we're, we're coming off the back of i can't remember a season which stuck to a template as much as last season as last season did so like w- one of the things that mark and i had just got punished by massively was the whole kane and son thing because it just took us both far too long to get on that bandwagon and those who got on that after the halls right at the start because i mean when 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 spurs battered southampton i was like oh it's never that's not gonna happen that's not gonna happen again you know, i was the same that, mate and i support them <laughs> yeah they're not that good and then they just you know just continue to live and i was watching the games and thinking they're just not that good i, I refuse to believe this team is still going to keep scoring this many goals and they just did it you know that, that's the kind of thing and it's it's trying to work out you know it, it should i change my whole strategy off the back of just last season or should i carry on doing what i've been doing which has been pretty successful you know before that and it's it is it's quite hard to judge i, I do wonder with the fans back whether we're going to have a a slightly more interesting season. I think last year was it was, it was fun, but well, we should certainly get some dull. of the balance back of home and away mm. results. So you would you would think. I'm, I'm interested as would, would you say in comparison to Mark, you're more of a an eye test manager in some of your decisions. Have you got more gut instincts? Do you think to some of the decisions you make in comparison to Mark? Yeah, I just don't get as many right. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's that's pretty much it for me. Yeah, I mean, I I do like I do like stats. I think I think Mark and I are probably fairly similar in in terms of our play styles. I think we we often look at a player and and like him when we're watching a game, and then use stats to back up that that gut feel. That's tended to be how I've how I've operated. And when you get the two that kind of mirror up, that's when you know I'll go for it. Even, you know, even if it costs a hit or or whatever. So I don't know. I think I think our play styles are quite similar, Mark. Do you, do you agree? Yeah, yeah. And I think what, what Panel was saying about e- ecosystem around you when you're making decisions, I thought that was a great point because, you know, I I don't have a lot of input from other managers. I have as in Black Box, and then we've got a WhatsApp channel with Luke, right? So there's the three of us, right? So when you throw Luke into the equation, who is maverick more than any other manager, even more than Prano, I would say, then that, that shows you the way in which we lean, right? We do lean more towards that kind of taking a risk, right? But I think I'm a bit more pragmatic than than as maybe. I'm certainly more pragmatic mm. than than Luke. But what what having this little group does for all of us, I think, is just kind of balance us out a bit. And I think I bet. I mean, you know, it was as I said, it was an experiment doing the podcast and doing Twitter last season and 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 being in the in the chat with with Luke and as. 
that could have gone badly wrong. Like Luke might have influenced me and I took too many risks, but it didn't. I managed to get it okay with the number of risks I took. One or two didn't come off, but, it, you know, whereas Luke went mad with the hits and, yeah, he made some cracking decisions. He had some amazing decisions. You had the Trossard one as that came in and I didn't follow that. So I think having the right inputs from other managers around you is really important, just as Pranil said. And and although I was on Twitter, I didn't really, I don't go on there and poll people and ask them what they think. And I don't really take too much stock in what is being said on Twitter. And I think that did me a few favours last season. See, I think I probably get a bit too influenced still by, by stuff, especially when I'm thinking of, you know, when I'm 50-50 on something and I'll turn to Twitter and see what everyone's talking about. And I'll end up convincing myself about, you know, a certain player because I've, I've read about it. I think, I think you're, better at separating that than 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 i am to be fair it's, it's difficult though isn't it when you when you go on when you go on twitter and you see 100 people talking about a player and you think oh, i haven't really thought about them and then you look at the stats and then they're really good and then that player just does nothing and you're like well i knew i knew he's gonna be i knew he's gonna be crap mm. <laughs> that's what i hate i just hate that feel like what Sud said about you know going with your gut and, and that adrenaline rush it's the complete opposite when you follow the herd and get a player it in there and do anything mm. yeah, yeah. James, I'm curious. We don't really talk to each other about our decisions, even on the pod. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't. I don't feel like we debate. Like I don't look at your team and give you tips and advice or vice versa. You don't I'd really listen to you. No, but the thing is. <laughs> You don't listen to anyone, or you don't talk. Well, to no, anyone this is this is no, no, no. <laughs> this is true. It, I think have, that... see, I don't have any WhatsApp groups talking FPL. No. Neither do you. With I hate anyone. Them. I hate so them. So we don't talk to anyone. Uh, whereas the, the boys obviously talk to each other and then externally. So maybe we need to talk to Mark owes about me about making. Mark owes me about 60 points for just for Sucha oh, yeah. to bench him. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like I, I'll go on WhatsApp and I'll be saying, I'm thinking of doing this or I'll go on the show. I think I'm doing this and as will talk me out of it. And it turns out to be the right decision. So he actually made probably as many right decisions with my team as I did last season, to be honest. Yeah. And convinced me to, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just to never love your own. So I mean, I, th- yeah. I definitely get benefit of having, but it's got to be the right inputs. Like you, you don't want to be in like of a, course, yeah, yeah. a twenty group WhatsApp group because then you've got no. so many opinions coming your way, right? So yeah, so you, it's just that, on, that sense checking. Like if I if I make a decision, if I say to James, like right, I'm going to buy habits this week as an example. Just someone who understands football saying, tell me why you're making that decision, and if mm. what you say to me makes sense, I'll say yeah, fine. And if what you say to me is absolute nonsense, I'm going to tell you actually you're talking out of your ass. And I never ask that question before I make a transfer to anybody. It might be three or four occasions over a season that I'll say to James, I'm going to do this. And maybe we just need to ask more questions, James. I, don't I, know. I, I think there's a big difference between going on Twitter and reading all the posts and yeah. stuff and having an actual conversation with someone who, yeah. who, who knows football and gets it. Because if you say, oh, I'm thinking of doing this, I've, I've been reading this, and they just go, look, calm down. Like You don't need to make this. You don't need to take a four-point yeah. hit taking him out. You, you know, he's not that good, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, actually, yeah. And you, you, you can just kind of chill you out a bit or because mm. because people i don't know when you're having a conversation people aren't so bogged down in everything often you ask them a question they just respond like a, a, a fight from the gut and often, and often i find those kind of conversations are the most natural and, and help the most before yeah. you start reading too much and getting i think about right, i'm just thinking about the the, the um, concept of coaching like in work and in business and in anything in life i think if you want to get better at something having a coach, whether it's personal trainer and fitness yeah. or whether it's business or whatever, having a coach is, is invaluable. But what coaches normally do is ask you the questions that make you think about your logic yourself. Yeah. And that's something that could be beneficial in FPL as well. It's decision-making rather than like yeah. what players They, they don't get tell you what to do. That's yeah. literally not, not what it's about, but it's just making sure stress testing your own thought process. And so coaching in FPL, but having someone to ask the question to that can make the think about what my logic is would be something I'll definitely benefit from. So, yeah. I think interestingly for, for myself, I mean, the, the guys know, particularly Mark will know that I, I probably listened to, to the two of you guys probably more than anyone else last year. Habits changed. I, I'm very much a podcast listener rather than a YouTube viewer, but obviously sitting at home and stuff, habits changed plus our increase in content changed a lot of my kind of FPL habits last year. But I'm pretty sure that I wouldn't have listened to the guys on a Thursday night if I hadn't already made my decision. 
because I think if I went in with that decision paralysis, I would know that whatever I heard from the boys, something in there would influence and make the decision for me. So I'm pretty sure in the cases, quite often I watch the guys after a deadline, caught up on it afterwards and go, oh, let me have a listen back to that afterwards because just enjoy listening to the lads. But I think I would have only watched them on a Thursday night last year when I'd have already made my decision, I think. So you somebody, because of the quality the of the data and stuff you bring is, is, is such an influence. But do you make your decisions that early in the week? Because one of the things I've tried to avoid this this season or last season is watching match of the day or watching live game Sunday and going, right, transfer booked in, that guy impressed me, I've got to get him in. Because I think I've, did, I've done that in the past and then stuck with that plan. And then there's been information that's come through in the week that could that counter that it, and I've ignored course. it, yeah. So I, I, think, I, I very much wait to the last minute to, unless I need to, to get price rises, right? There's there's weeks where you can and weeks you can't. I think probably the earlier in the season, the earlier you're making decisions. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you go into sort of February onwards and you, you're you sodded about worrying about price rises and stuff. And you think, well, I, I could take my time here and stuff. Um, I think probably international weeks, I wouldn't bog myself down by making the decision two weeks early in the international week because the player gets injured and your, your plans are in tatters and stuff. But um, I'm such knows I'm very single minded in what I do, so I tend to make my decision, and I'm not one that flip flops. Once a decision's made, there's not, and it's it's probably a bad trait in me. I, I won't say, I won't be changed. Mm. I won't be changed. We flip flop a lot, don't we? Oh yeah. But then you two are bloody good <laughs> FPL managers, and we're not. So I'm not. I'm definitely not saying do what I do by any no. means. So no. part of the journey, I think, for me and Suj this week, speaking to all the content creators, is like. All six of you are better than us. So what can we learn to be better? Because obviously what I'm I'm doing, I wouldn't say I'm a bad FPL manager, but I'm not hitting near the kind of ranks that you two's histories get near. So what I'm doing is not uh, essentially doesn't work for me. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't you know, I wouldn't endorse thinking about it as much as I do, though. That's the thing. Like oh, I don't want know, to do that, mate. You know, it's I, crazy. I, I mean, like I you do can't. the prep for the show and and but it, it's it's all the kind of spare thoughts while I'm walking the kids to school or picking them up from school or going to get a pint of milk. I, I almost like say, oh, we're short of something. So I've got 20 minutes to walk to the shop so I can think about FBL. I make up excuses to go for a walk. You know, it's things like that where it just gets a little bit too much. But obviously it has worked for me, you know, like putting that amount of thinking time into your decisions and deliberating like I do has has I've, helped some seasons right? yeah and i think that's that's kind of what i like about black book because i don't want it to ever be like mark and i are telling you what to do and we're saying this player is top of the stats you need to get him in i think everything we try and do is trying to just get you to think maybe a bit differently about how you play and which players to consider and how you use stats and how you watch games and try and look at it through more of like an fpl lens and just watching match of the day or only focusing on stats because i think we have a, a bit of a balance between us on, on both of them so often you'll hear me saying some nonsense thing about how I think Havertz is a Sunday league player and how rubbish I think he is. And Mark might argue and other people will get in the chat and be like, what's he can't talking about? I can't believe you repeated that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't either. You've got to, you got to, you got to, I own, can got to just be grabbed things. again. You've got to That's the intro. <laughs> <laughs> As Damn what it. price is Havertz this year? He's 8.5, isn't he? Oh, five. you've looked, you've looked at you. He's cheaper than Jamie <laughs> Sancho, <laughs> aren't I've had a look. I've had a cheeky look at him. I mean, if he is, if he is starting as, you know, false nine or, you know, yeah. not in the picture, he's, he is an option. I, Mark and I disagreed on this, actually. I mean, the, the Sunday league coming was blown way out of proportion. Let's, let's not, let's not get into that. But I, I still, I still, there's another quote for you. I still don't think he's going to be a 200 plus point player. And I think that, that, can he reach those levels? I think he's going to be a great player for Chelsea. I think he's obviously class, but do I think FPL wise he's going to really reach those elite numbers? I, I'm not. I'm not convinced he will. But a lot of people think differently, and that's where you know it's, it's going to be really interesting to see his stats and see his performances next year because he's well, you know, he's, he's Champions League winning, goal scoring winning player now. So he's mm. in in a way his kind of stock has increased even more, and it was already pretty high. So it'd be interesting to see what happens to him. Yeah, and he's very young as well, right? He's, he's early 20s, so sometimes people take a bit of time to adapt to the Premier League. He obviously had COVID last season yep. as well, which which has had all sorts of impacts on different players. You don't know how it affects them. I, I disagree on the fact that he'll be a 200-point player. I think eventually he will get to that, that height. So I just think he's got that much talent. Um, but I don't know if it'll be this season. It might, be, mm. it might take a little bit longer. I'm going to abstain. 
<laughs> I was very on the fence. You don't have any of that, I'm do not having well. Havertz comments come back to bite me. Mate. I mean, I said after game week one last year that he passed worse than my mother. And such was his performance. So yeah, Brighton. James got away with that one, did he? Yeah. yeah well, I ain't got as many viewers. As, I ain't got as many viewers as you. Have I? So of course, I, I I my only my point where his performances reminded me of a Sunday league player. Not that he was a Sunday league player. That was that was the key difference. That, that was, Brighton debut was shocking. Oh man. God, he was so bad. He really was. I mean, it wasn't his fault. He shouldn't have been thrown into the team so early right clearly he wasn't ready Lampard oh, was right. naive well, wasn't he and that was yeah. it yeah um, where else has come out of this black box then that we can take is it there must be some sort of definite learnings you've gone I'm yeah. definitely not doing that again yeah uh, go on Mark. there are two things that I focused on last season that sound bloody obvious but actually it's surprising how often you don't do it right um one was transfer out players who aren't performing for you right don't don't focus on targets and then find a player that you can sell to get that target look first at who isn't performing right and an example i'll give you here is i look back at the greek i got the greelish hall against liverpool right and in many ways it was lucky because i was thinking of getting barnes in for greelish that was when i got greelish in i got him in for the fulham away game he did all right but i looked at liverpool game thought well i want barnes instead because he's got a better run coming up I didn't do it because in the end, I got Calvert-Lewin. I made two transfers before the Villa-Liverpool game. I had a look tonight. I got um, Che Adams out because he wasn't performing. And I got um, I got Werner out because he wasn't performing. And I got Calvert-Lewin in and Jimenez in. But it meant, crucially, that I didn't do the Barnes to, uh, Grealish to Barnes transfer because I just concentrated on getting the two players out that weren't doing it for me. Whereas in previous seasons, I might have gone, I really want Barnes. I know Grealish is doing all right, but I'm going to get him out because I really want Barnes, right? So I think that rule of, okay, Done look Grealish first at who isn't performing and get make them your transfers. Not Don't fixate on, oh, that player's playing really well or that player's going up in price, I've got to get them. And I'm going to get them in for whoever I can get out to afford them. Because doing that, opens you up to that risk of missing out on a haul for the player you're getting rid of. So I think that was one learning that I benefited from early and kept doing throughout the season where possible. And the other one was just captains, right? Go with fixtures. Just go, you know, I studied Severt, who had a really amazing record in captains the season before we started Black Box. I, and I spoke to him about, you know, what did you do? How did you, how did you get so strong at your captains? He just said, I went with fixture. I went with fixture difficulty. And, and that was my guiding light with captains. And, I did that last season. Did I, I didn't do brilliantly with captains, but I definitely did better. And I'm just going to carry that on as well. So two simple lessons, but actually at times in the heat of the game week, when you're about to make a decision, you do sometimes forget those. So reminding yourself of those two, I think, was important. As? Yeah, I think, again, I think we've one for me is, is just this whole... Uh, you know, sometimes you just get a gift and you've, and you've just got to take it. And I think we saw it with Lundstrom a couple of years ago. And I, th I think we saw it with Dallas last year. And it just, again, it just, there's always that element of stubbornness. And I think this is where things like Twitter and, and things can be, particularly for someone like me, and probably should you, you as well, given what you just said, you see everyone getting Lundstrom in. He's in like 80, 90% of teams. Everyone's getting Dallas. And it's like, no, I'm going to stick with O'Connell or I'm going to stick with Eiling like I did last year. And I think, you know, those, those sort of, more budget players that they're just locks you just don't have to worry about them and i flip flop between different 4.5 options different six midfielders all, all this kind of stuff so i think the, the obviously the premiums are important but getting that lock of those of those more of those cheaper players is, is really important i wonder who's going to emerge this season yeah. i think it's ironic you're right that i do do that yeah, yeah. both lundstrom and dallas were gaming one picks for me both seasons Ir ironically both of those oh, two don't were you anymore then but though <laughs> though but the other transfers. Other 13 don't forget picks the other 13, shit. 14 players. Yeah, yeah. It was those two, those two did okay, actually, for me, ironically. It's funny, Mark, you're talking about fixing problems first. And inside me, all I'm thinking is, but I've got to get that player while he's on a streak. But I've got to get that player on a streak. So I I I agree with you. I think you're right. And yet I'm also my, my heart's pulling me in a different direction, saying, if I don't get Sonny now, when am I going to get him? Because I'm going to miss the next three or four games. So I don't know. It's going to take a lot of self. I think it'll take a lot of self-discipline to actually stick by that rule and say, well, you know what? I've got to stick with Bruno and not move to Sonny, even though he's on a hot streak, because I've got to fix this problem first. Serge, can I jump in? Uh, uh, the expression, you guys don't play Sky, do you? 
I dabble, but dabble. not regularly. No. No. Do you remember the expression I used a lot in Sky last year? Uh, remind me. Want versus need. Want versus mm. need is what we talked about a lot at the end of the end of the season, especially because tra- you have a finite amount of transfers. So then you really have to create. You can't take hits in Sky. So do I really need it or do I just want it? Yeah, exactly yeah, that. Well, the, 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 the worst decision I made last year was game week two, taking out Ings for Martial. And Ings got 13 points on against Spurs. Because <laughs> you took yeah. a forward out before playing my team. <laughs> well, exactly. But it was it was that it was it was two things. It was trying to jump ahead of everyone, getting Martial before everyone got him in and trying to preempt that. that you had Martial for game week four getting sent off against Tottenham instead. I know. Uh, <laughs> no, I'd sold him. I'd sold oh, well him that done. week for Jimenez, you got nothing. <laughs> but yeah, but that actually that was quite a good one because I actually did I actually did rectify that 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 kind of mistake. But that is that is want versus need because I didn't need to do that transfer. It cost me four points. Yeah. I didn't I didn't need to do that. If I, if I yeah. listened to Mark and and just left that, then I would have been a lot better off. But it is hard to do, so You're absolutely right. Yeah. Sometimes you've got you've got to go with like, well, I've got to catch this bandwagon because he's taking off in price. And I'm driven by price rises a lot early season. Like the first ten game weeks, I will try and get value locked into my team and get on bandwagons early on. And I do endorse that as a tactic. I think it's important. Um, I go early with my transfers to catch price rises. I don't mind admitting that, right? And I take risks with it. But I set my team up to enable myself to do it. So I always have one or two decent subs that if I get an injury from a European game or or a League Cup game, then I've got someone to come in. And that's important, right? If you give yourself that flexibility, if you've got a good first sub and even a good second sub, it gives you the ability to take risks. I see a lot of squads put together with real budget benches which is fine, but if a bandwagon takes off and, you know, you want to get on the price rise, you know, you can't take a risk with an early transfer because you've only got 11 players who really mm. can get your points. Whereas if you get 12 or 13 players, you think, you know, Suchek last year was great for that. Yeah. You have Suchek for a sub, if he has to come on for you because you get an injury midweek, no, no worries because actually you actually want him to start Suchek. So, you know, having 12 or 13 active players, again, is... It's quite useful because what you lose in the money with the initial lineup, you gain back in money by being able to take get early transfers because you, there's no risk by doing it. How much football do you guys watch? Because one of the things that uh, really was a takeaway from when we talked with Mark General was how he watches football. He watches it very cold, like emotionless in terms of after the fact, he knows the result, and it doesn't then mess around with his emotions from an FPL point of view. Um, do you guys watch a lot of football and does it affect your FPL decisions in that way? Who do you want to start? It's, As I, mean, I want to know how much yeah. is affected by watching Brighton. Felt <laughs> I mean, imagine the complete opposite of what General said, and that's me watching watching FPL. Because I watch, I, I would say I watch every game I've got a player in or any game that I've got a player who I want to get in which means I pretty much watch every game yeah. <laughs> unless it's something like Newcastle, Burnley. And I haven't oh, no, Burnley oh, again. come on. We've got Newcastle Every pod listeners. this week, we've, we've offended Burnley, Burnley. listeners. Don't Please slag them off, fans. <laughs> no, we're going to make up for that later, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I just meant because I'm not, I wouldn't, wasn't scouting any of their players and because you know, I didn't have any of their players. It's you guys that have interpreted it badly. So, you know, <laughs> that's, on, that's, on, that's on you. Uh, yeah, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I watch everything, and I I can't watch games cold. I, I I'm so into it, and I I do wonder where the where the line is between my enjoyment of football and where my enjoyment of FPL is. And if I didn't play FPL, I'd I'd probably watch so I'd probably watch so little Premier League football. Um, international tournaments were different. Like this was the first year I played an international tournament, and I, I've watched every game and quite enjoyed that, but. I do wonder with the Premier League if if I didn't play FPL how much I would watch. So I think I'd almost veer off into more of an FPL fan than a football fan at, at times, which I don't think helps with my decision making because I I'm scrutinising players and where they are on the pitch and how many passes they're making and all that stuff a lot of the time rather than watching the the actual game. So yeah, my my answer is I watch as as much as as possible. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, watching football's never a chore for me. I've done it as since I was so high, you know, as a kid. Um, I was brought up with it, being around football and in the house. And my dad was like into non-league football, so I watched a lot of football live as a kid. Grew up with it. So, yeah, it, before FBL, I watched football for pleasure. When they, you know, this is the days when there was like one live game, and that was the FA Cup final, basically. Um, 
So, yeah, I, I still watch football for fun, but there's no doubt, as he's right, FBL has, has added a different twist on that. And I do watch matches now just purely to educate my opinions on players or future targets and so on. Um, and I probably do watch it differently for having FBL in my life than before. Um, I think, given my life situation with two kids, if I didn't play FBL, I wouldn't watch half as much football. I just wouldn't do it. It wouldn't be the priority. But I make it the priority now I play FBL. Yeah, same same for me now. I think I think with the little one now, there's a lot of games I wouldn't watch. I'd obviously still do whatever I do with Spurs and stuff. But I think that, oh, I've got to hang around for the 8 o'clock, Chef United versus Burnley or whomever. Um I wouldn't. I don't. I always watch games looking for an angle. Now I'm looking for an angle for the yeah. podcast more than a an FPL position. And it might even be that for you that it creates an angle that you think is something that creates a, a segment for you on Black Box well, and, or and just general conversation as well. Like yeah. when I when I talk to people, I want to be able to say, oh, "I watched the game and I remember this tackle this guy did, or I remember this pass." I like to just have that extra bit of edge, and it's why I started playing it in the first place because you know I think what FPL gives a lot of people is, and we talked about it earlier, is that ability to chat to anyone in a room and, and have that and that's why I got into it when I went to university I knew everyone's going to be into football and I didn't really know football that well and it just gave me that kind of hook into it but I I don't like not knowing things I've got that proper FOMO I need to always know the score I need to know who's got the assist I need to know who's, who's got the goal but I also need more than that I also need to be sort of the most clued up person and often my opinion's completely wrong on what I've seen but I need to have that opinion if that makes sense or have an opinion of something if people are talking about a match that I haven't watched that kills me. Do you go to the Abex a lot, As? I wish. It's too hard to get tickets. They're just oh, completely really? completely sold out unless you've got a season ticket. I'm, ho- I'm hoping they're, they're expanding the ground, more seats. And I wonder after a few years if they're going to have you know a bit more capacity to have kind of people off the street in. But it's been impossible. Absolutely impossible. I was hoping you was going to say yes. I was going to say, what do you do when you're at a game that's three o'clock at half time? Do you, do you have to check the other things? Yes. Because I, Suj knows, I don't give a shite. No. So no. sometimes I honestly I'll, I'll come out the ground and get on the train. I still haven't looked. You're checking the, the scores during the match, mate. Not the half time. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm <laughs> I, 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 I'll I check. Couldn't focus on anything other than my team. My my, my my attitude is very much like once you submitted, there's it's like worrying about the decisions after the event. Once you've submitted the team, you can't change nothing. I can't influence it. Yeah. That that that. But I'm telling you, it is. Yeah. It is for me. I think for me, because I'm a Forest fan and they've been in decline for so long and never looked like getting out of the championship, um, that's gone. Their decline has gone hand in hand with ramping up FPL for me. So I've kind of, you know, I'm ashamed to say like Forest will lose now and it doesn't affect me anywhere like it used to 15 years ago. And some, and, you know, I don't really know who Forest have got, who play, who they play next. Have they got a midweek game? And I'm, I was a season ticket holder. I was quite hardcore. Now I'm not at all. So I don't have that affinity with my club that you have, James. And I'm quite envious of that, to be honest. When I hear you talk about Spurs, and I remember uh, knocking you up and saying, oh, would you mind coming on the show after the Spurs game? You're like, you're having a laugh, aren't you? After a match, oh, yeah. the Spurs it was like a Europa League. I think it was when we lost to Zagreb as well. Imagine yeah, if I'd yeah. have come on, yeah. And I was like, you know what? I get that totally, but I don't have that in me anymore. And I kind of, I do miss it because like Forest losing or disappointing me used to ruin my week now it's fbl that does that for me thanks very much <laughs> i've got a stat for you mark you like it chris hewton uh, has never finished lower than fourth in the championship when he's had a full season in the championship all right and well i do listeners like that. who don't know he's <laughs> but First i think we're about to break that record yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've well, got still... the neighbors that i was going to say you've got uh Ned, the neighbors up the road in derby are not doing so well so that's something yeah, well, yeah. Right, bit of that's around that's the place. podcast for next week, Sid. Indeed. Um, let's talk before we finish. Let's get a little bit of FPL current opinion from you guys. What's what's the feeling amongst you on the forwards at the moment? I kind of we split into two groups, don't we? Harry Kane and everyone else, don't we? Basically. Yeah, I mean, I'm waiting on what Kane does. Um, it's it's such a big deal, isn't it? Um, I I don't see him staying at Spurs. I, I just can't see it now. But you can um, fuck off. <laughs> I want him to, now, James. I want him to. I don't. I don't want him to leave. I, I've, 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 I've really I been do. on board with the cane from the very start when he first. You can fuck through. off too. <laughs> um, so I, you know, I'm anticipating that he leaves, and um, that will change a lot of teams. Right, it will because if he goes into a team like City, who are going to present chances to him on an even more regular basis, 
we've got to set up and take notice and we've got to change to accommodate that, I think. So if he stays where he is, I'll probably avoid Kane until you know I've settled on what Nuno's doing with them. And for Spurs' fixture to even out a bit, I think they've got a bad bad start. I think you've been given a Oh, every game's bad start. for us, mate. Yeah. So I think at the moment, you know, Tony's interesting because he is a risk. You know, we're getting into the Pookie territory again where are oh, we falling for a championship player and the potential there and really he's going to struggle. But I do think he's you know, a different animal to, to Pookie. I think he, he, you know, he, he will, he's more, he, even more of a predator and he's got even more roots to goal uh, than, than Pookie had when he came up with Norwich. And I do think Brentford are a bit more direct, a bit more fast to get in the balls into dangerous areas than Norwich were when they came up. And I think Tony should do all right out of that. So I think he's going to represent value. So Tony's in my thinking. Probably Wilson is as well because I think Spurs and um, Newcastle have got a good start. And and the Newcastle we saw at the end of the season with Sam Maximan there was a very different to Newcastle to what we've to the narrative of them being a dull team who don't attack. So I'm hoping that continues if Sam Maximan stays and Wilson stays fit. So he's he's tempting me, but you know you know people are saying it's too early. I haven't made any decisions really at all. Everything's going to change. Um, having said that Bamford and Mafina weren't priced fairly, I might end up going with Bamford as well. You know, I don't know. So, yeah, it's a, it's a couple of weeks yet till I make decisions on forwards, I think. As, Welbeck, Mulpe, Connolly. Yeah, I who's, think... who's busting the XG this year, mate? <laughs> probably Brighton again. Well, probably not. Probably not busting, <laughs> busting it out. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think like we've, we, we just seem to see year after year the forwards pool of premium forwards just decreases more and more teams you know going to these false nines or whatever Aguero leaving now only really leaves Kane and Vardy as the kind of the two premiums of choice I think Vardy is is surely is surely done now we, me and Sid make this mistake every summer and get it yeah. wrong oh, that especially was the, the last start one of season especially at the start of the season it always does well but I mean there's no, there's no way I'm going to start with, with a 10.5 Vardy and I think we just have so many um, good mid-price options Watkins Wilson uh, Abraham, if he moves, Antonio's there. Tony, uh, the Mark Spencer, be Bamford's eight, Calvert Luna mm. eight. Like it, it doesn't seem like there's much justification of spending over eight unless you're getting unless you're getting Kane. If Kane stays at Spurs, I'm worried about Spurs this season. I bet you are as well. You you're worried me. if he stays. You what do you think? I think yeah. if he goes, I mate. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if he goes to City, he's he's in. He's mm. first choice. Like I'd, I'd I'd pick him over Salah. I think that the, Kane isn't going to play for Man City in game week one, so the chances are that none of it, the majority of us aren't going mm. to start with him. I think the interesting concept to it is, what if he signed pre game week one and he's obviously not going to play against Spurs, but he is then going to play against Norwich in game week two? Do we then completely tear that up? We'll take minus fours, aren't we? Possibly. I think you have to, right? If he plays mm. Norwich game week two and he's playing Kane Man at City, City he, 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 I, yeah, I can't see any circumstance. Where he's, a he's a game breaker. He's a game breaker because he's on everyone's team and he's captain every week. I think. Mm. Uh, well, the, there will be some people that go against it and try and be different, and he'd get he'd get thirty goals. I reckon. No yeah, question. I mean that that city fixture against Norwich game week two that that could be a big one because a lot of people who are going Bruno with their initial lineup probably won't have a city player in game week two. So you know, there's opportunity there, and if Kane's in the city team, then. That opportunity is even greater, I think. But then with the Sal- captaincy. Salah at home to Burnley is not uh no, yeah. You don't have to overlook it, do you? The, the alarm, You've got the a great alarm, option there. That's need versus want again, isn't it? Yeah, well the alarm that's exactly the, the alarm bells ring a bit because I mean in, in between that Norwich game, the sandwich between Tottenham, Arsenal, Leicester. So, you know, three fairly difficult games. Spurs, okay, can maybe make a case for everybody. But I, you know, he won't play against us, as no, I'm telling no, you. No, but I, City, City in general, right? It's a kind of, it's a kind of that Norwich game is the kind of game where you could tear your team up to get in a load of City players. And Norwich have come up from the, from the Championship now with better underlying stats, better yeah, much better than, defensively than, than they were. And it does, in you know, I, I, and it's another lesson I think. Normally, when you when you tear your team apart to get in a player or two players in for one fixture. It's very often that doesn't pay off. And we saw it with Kane before we were against Cardiff a few years ago. Um, it's happened to me a couple of times last season. So I do wonder if there's going to be an element of that, but he would be very hard to, if, to resist. If you look at them City fixtures after Norwich, Arsenal, Leicester, Southampton, yeah. Chelsea, Liverpool, Liverpool, and Leicester, Chelsea and Liverpool all away as well. Yeah. Um, 
I'm not sure you'd want to go breaking your teams. Um, Ian Acho is another forward I'd, I'd like to obviously throw into the, the mix in that range. Yeah. Does that necessitate, do you think, guys, do we need to start with three forwards? Because I'm not convinced that is the case. Not for me. No, I think there's, there's lots of value in midfield as well. I think you've got, there's plenty of, of options around the seven, five, eight million mark in, in, in midfield mm. as well. So it's just that same old thing. I think, you know. I just think the six, five, seven, seven, five strikers are better than the midfielders on mm. the whole. And the thing with the strikers is that every single one, whether it's Watkins or Wilson or Antonio, you can make a case for all of them and, and none are wrong. So they're all justifiable. I think the fact that we're only allowed to pick three strikers means we'll see a little bit more variance. The one that I want to break out from the pack and really have a good season for no reason other than um, how bad it was last season would be Jimenez because he's at seven and a half million. The two previous seasons before were 190 something points, 180 something points, decent returns. If, if we see in pre-season that he's fit and the head injury hasn't kind of affected his confidence in any way, no one's going to own Jimenez, but he's been proven for a couple of years now in the Premier League. They've got a monster run from game week four mm -hmm. that lasts yeah. about nine and, or ten game weeks. Very good. And we'd love it. If, if, if Jimenez came back after that horrible injury... and, and going to win every goals, time he goes you know. up for a header, let alone what he's going to be thinking. Yeah. yeah but, it's uh, a big yeah. injury to come it's an, back. It's, an, it's another one to chuck in, though, in that yeah. bracket of seven and a half million. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Boys on the podcast, say hello to our friends. You're going to be shy now, aren't you? Playing FPL, the yeah. Room. Is he playing <laughs> FPL, yeah? He'd be better than Suge, I can promise you that. All oh, right. I'd say yeah. that's that's a good point to leave it. <laughs> <laughs> James has got family duties indeed. I think I think so. Boys, thank you so much for joining us this evening uh, and wrapping up our content creator week as well. There hasn't been a pod this week that I haven't taken something away that's got my, got my uh, thought thoughts about how I managed going and tonight was no exception oh thanks I'm, for having us on it was a pleasure I've no um, idea what you just said <laughs> No, but seriously, I want to I want to thank you guys for the stuff you put out. I mean, you, the, no, the amount of stuff you put out is ridiculous. And I, I do love the non-FBL stuff as well. So keep it going because um, I certainly appreciate it. And you're, you're, you're definitely on my listening list for next season as well. I'm humbled that you like the non-FBL stuff. <laughs> I do. That I means it. a lot to me that you're just listening it's... to something that's not FPL. Because <laughs> I know you listen to everyone, fair dues. <laughs> I listen Je to very few, but I do listen to you guys. Nice. Thanks, very mate. Regular. Shame you didn't listen to us last pre-season. No. <laughs> no Ben Davies for me this year. No, no, no. Won't be no Black Ben Box. Davies, mate. Nah. I talked to you about Ryan Sessegnon offline. That would scare <laughs> everyone now. Um, now, thanks so much, guys. Tell tell everyone, just in case they don't know, where they can find you on Twitter, YouTube, etc. Where can they find you guys? Take care of this, ass gone. You want me to take? I'll do the, the yeah. smash and the like. Uh, well, we haven't got a... We're going to be putting a poll out about when people actually want us to do the show. Uh, but you can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash FPLblackbox, ffscout underscore as me, ffscout underscore Mark for Mark. Uh, it will either be Wednesday or Thursday evenings, I think, um, going forward. But yeah, we're going to we're gonna see what, what people kind of want. We're going to try and go a bit earlier than we did last year. Um, so yeah, but look, really looking forward to getting going again. And our first show will be very soon. So an hour after this, we're going straight from yeah. this into the yeah, first show. Yeah, yeah. Which is yeah, the problem is we put this out yeah. yeah two days ago. So. Oh yeah. Like, yeah we'll listen to yours time. weirdly before everyone else listens to this. Oh yeah. That is nice. weird. Yeah. Is weird. Yeah. Yeah, and where can they follow week. you on Twitter, guys? Oh, I said that. Oh did you? Sorry. We didn't the kid say was the black box in. address though. We've got a nah, black yeah. box address now, haven't we? Don't forget yeah. the underscore at the end, Eva. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was gonna say I didn't say because I couldn't remember it. Yeah. Uh FPL black box and then an underscore. Is that it? So tough. Yeah, it is. That is it. Yeah. It is. At FPL uh, black box yes. underscore, yes, yeah. It is. I couldn't remember where I'd put the underscore, but yes. That's where you put it. <laughs> James, next week, EFL week. EFL week, yeah, because that's enough FPL for one week. Let me take my mind off it for a week, yeah. Uh, Monday, we've got a podcast coming out on the fi finances on Derby County. Mark Southern said he'd be listening to that. Uh, Tuesday, got a bit of a correspondent reunion. Wednesday, we're going to look at parachute payments. Thursday, Clash of the Correspondent returns ahead of the first Football League fixture of the new season. Bournemouth versus West Brom with AFC BNG and Gemma and Harrison Eno. And then next Friday, I'll be joined by uh, Jamie Roberts and Angus McPhail from the EFL Fantasy Podcast. We'll be talking a bit about gaffer fantasy ahead of the new season. I'll be playing that, so I'll be listening to those. Amazing. I will be as well, yeah. Good yeah, man, nice. nice. 
Uh, great lineup. I think this has probably been one of my favourite weeks of content that we've produced, Brett James. So on we go, uh, onwards and upwards to everybody that's listening. If you're coming out tomorrow to the meetup, look forward to seeing you then. Otherwise, stay safe. Thank you for listening. Ciao for now. Thanks, Mark. Thank as cue music, please, man, child.